before, during, and after the elections. We also thank you for exercising your civic responsibility in voting for the candidates of your choice. For us, in G5, the presidential election was about fairness, equity, and justice. Our commitment was for a presidential power shift from the north, where it has been for the last eight years, to southern Nigeria. Thank and congratulate. We also thank and congratulate the world and national cohesion. We appreciate the voters of River State for overwhelmingly voting for the state's national assembly candidates of the River State People's Democratic Party, PDP. We are particularly elated with the measures of my deputy governor, Dr. Mrs. Ipalibo Hari Banigo, as one of the only three elected women senators of Nigeria for the 10th National Assembly. Her election further demonstrates the commitment of our government and the River State PDP in advancing inclusiveness and women's political empowerment in River State. As the Sales Ruling Party, the PDP's superlative performance and achievements are beyond question. We have done tremendously well in our priority areas of security, infrastructure, education, healthcare, judiciary, urban renewal, and rural development. Under the PDP, River State is now one of Nigeria's safest and most secure states to live do business, work, and raise our children. In four years, we delivered two flyovers and several from A roads across the state, including the first phase of the Transcalabari Road, the Gori and the Republic Unity Road, the Sabuwa Bori Corner Road, and phase one of the Ahuda Omok Road. The dualization of the M of Abalama. Talama Junction Road and Phase 2 of the Hodomok Road, among several others, are also underway. We have also changed the Portacot city landscape and other local government area. Forever with a first class road network, flyovers, and other impactful infrastructures. We have tremendously improved access to quality education with the reconstruction and delivery of several primary and secondary education schools across the state. We also expanded access to quality tertiary education with the delivery of four new campuses of River State University at Ahoda, Emoa, Eche, and Sabinwa. We have provided full scholarship for River State students, reading medicine, and related courses at the Palmer University of Medical Sciences for an essential of that university to date. Over 500 universities have benefited from this scholarship, which we have renewed for another four years. We introduced and built the College of Medical Sciences at River State University, a job at the country's best and most resourceful medical college by the General Medical and Dental Council. We have delivered first class healthcare facilities for the state, including the government health clinic the Modern Child Hospital, the River State University Hospital, and the Dr. Peter Utley Cancer and Cardiovascular De Diseases Diagnostic and Treatment Center. The reconstruction of post cancer Harrison Hospital, the dental and maxillofacial, including ear, nose, throat, and ophthalmology center will soon be completed and open for public use. We have provided several rural communities with basic infrastructure including internal and other roads linking them to other parts of the state. Never in the history had the master witnessed the commissioning and flag off of new projects up to the last weeks of our session as we are doing. Under our watch, nothing comes before the last state. River state is first and everything else is surrounding. We have never looked back on fighting for, defending, and protecting 
the economic and political interests of River States and its citizens. We fought for and secured the return of Sokoye and Gassis and Akiri and Imbiri Oifis to River State, which now enjoys the derivation process from this gas and Oifis. We are still courageously fighting to decentralize the collection of all the other tax to states to strengthen fiscal federalism and enhance the economic viability of state governments. Lately, we join other pro people state governments in the struggle to challenge the federal government of national cash policy and thank the Supreme Court for its positive intervention to end the suffering of the masses. We are calling equal protection to indigenous and non-indigenous and advance the security and well-being of everyone who lives in the state without discrimination. We have ensured the security of lives and property and provided a continual business environment, including reducing taxes, eliminating double taxation, and timely issues certificate of occupancy, enabling the business community to thrive in the state. We are built an, an excellent relationship with the Christian Association of Nigeria Khan and other faiths and religious bodies, including the Islamic faith, ensuring religious harmony and progress in the state. The youth are the future of River State, and our commitment to their progress has been strong since 2015. Apart from expanding education opportunities, no state government has integrated youth and women into the political and governance systems as we have done. From 2015 to date, Rivers youth have held and continue to hold elective and appointive offices, including party positions, local government chairman, deputy local government chairman, councillors, state health assembly members, special advisors, and commissioners. We have reopened the recruitment process and directed the River State Civil Service Commission to employ 10,000 youths into the, civil, into the state's civil service within the next one month. We therefore enjoy our vibrant youth to take up lifetime careers with the River State Civil Service and contribute to the development of the state. As we all know, the discarded governorship and state houses of our family elections will hold in River State next this Saturday, 18th of March, 2023. With the quality of progress we have delivered in the last eight years, it is evident that River State will be more outstanding and closer to fulfilling its purpose if the current development tempo is threatened and sustained for the next four years. And therefore, the successor we need is a governor who will consolidate and continue with the new river's vision, defend and protect the state's interests, and propel it to more remarkable progress and prosperity. This is precisely what the candidate of the PDP, Sir, similarly former and his deputy, Professor Ngozi Mma Odo, have committed to accomplishing with their blueprint for consolidation and continuity. Similar forum is a Christian, a Knight of St. Christopher, an accountant with over two decades of working experience in civil service. He progressed to the Senate of his public service career as permanent secretary and accountant general of River State, where he recently resigned to contest as the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Similar for us, Rodney Mead, Professor Mrs. Ngozi Maodo is also a Christian with an excellent public service career. She is a former public secretary, commissioner of education, and university lecturer. Both candidates are persons of impeccable character and knowledgeable technocrats with excellent public service records. Both candidates are familiar with the workings of government, the standard public service rules, and the precepts of good governance having worked closely with me in different capacities. They also know 
the developmental challenges we face as a state and as a people and what we can do together to resolve them, having lived and worked in and for the state throughout their lives. This is the first time civil pharmaceutical servants with knowledge, capacity, competence, passion and experience have been given a chance to administer the state and drive its development with their blueprint for the consolidation and continuity of the New River's vision. Therefore, this is the turn of civil servants to be at the hands of state affairs. It is a golden opportunity for every civil and public servant serving and retired to fully embrace and ensure that the next governor and the governor come from their constituency. We must agree that this election is about the future of River State. It's about moving River State forward to the next level. It's about advancing the security and well-being of our people. It's about protecting and defending the interests of River State. Having come this far in our development agenda, development agenda, we cannot afford now to gamble with our future and vote for candidates with unstable and questionable character to govern our state. The ABC candidate fraudulently acquired the state value assets with his political mentor and business partner, Ratra Borotumi Amechi, both are indicted by the judicial panel of inquiry. They are currently facing criminal prosecution before a competent court of law in charge number PHC to that stroke 3673 to C3 stroke 2022 state versus Rotumi Chubika Abechi and four others for diverting the state 50 million US dollars to themselves. 50 million US dollars at the current exchange rate is the equivalent of over 37 billion naira. But instead of undergoing the trials to clear their names, if at all, they have been employing all kinds of maneuvers to stall their trials. Rotumi Abechi and Protege Toyekon actively opposed the demand for power shift to the south and worked against their party presidential candidate in River State. When the president elect emerged at the winner, Toyoko rushed to congratulate him on his Instagram handle, but deleted the past the past when he was criticized for his dishonest, hypocritical, and opportunistic behavior. Rotumi Amechi woefully failed as governor of River State for eight years. He also could not attract any single development project to River State and Minister for Transportation for seven years. Recently, he threw caution to the wind with his irresponsible comments on the emotive abandoned property issue in a desperate attempt to deceive the Igbo population into voting for his uninspiring APC governorship candidate to a code. Igbo and Rivers people have lived harmoniously together for the case as brothers and sisters without any issues. We we'll continue to appreciate our Igbo brothers and friends as among the most significant investors and contributors to the development of River State. Our fraternal ties will continue forever as nobody can ever divide us. Therefore, it's regrettable for Rotem Amechi to now thoughtlessly attempt to instigate hostility between brothers and sisters to advance selfish political objectives. His favorite denial is an afterthought and a confirmation of his unsteady character. We must be wary of these devious, deceptive, and desperate politicians masquerading and projecting themselves before unsuspecting voters and leaders that can be entrusted with power. Let us not be deceived by their campaign promises, their political fakes, jokers, failures, never do us an opportunist, desperate for power to loot our treasure again. They have nothing to offer but lies, deceit, and empty promises. Toyoko knows nothing about governance and cannot give what he does not have. We assure you that with the PDP, the future of River State is bright and secure. Similarly, Fumaran and his deputy have the knowledge, capacity, character, passion, and experience to step into our shoes and deliver their blueprint for River State. Therefore, I appeal to you to vote for the PDP 
and all its candidates in the governorship and state house and assembly elections on Saturday, 18th March 2023, for consolidation and continuity. We commend the leadership of the Labour Party for adopting and endorsing the candidate of the PDP, Shimele Fumara, as the candidate of choice for the governor of River State. We also commend the leadership of the River State chapter of the Interparty Advisory Council for endorsing the governorship as the House of Assembly candidates of the PDP for next Saturday's elections. We implore you to mobilize the electorates in your constituencies to vote for PDP so that we can work together to protect and advance the interests and progress of our state. We have received credible intelligence indicating the plans by the former Minister of Transportation, Lutheran Amici, and the APC to overrun and disrupt the elections in River State with army personnel and civilian talks and courtes dressed in army and police uniform. We have written to notify the Honorable Minister of Defense, the Chief of Army Staff of the Nigerian Army, and the General of Staff Commanding, the 6th Division of the Nigerian Army Protocol, and requested that no military personnel is released to any politician to interfere with next Saturday's elections in River State. Furthermore, we have noticed that the anti terrorism unit of the State Police Command continue to provide VIP security services to politicians in defense of the Spirit General's order to withdraw all police personnel attached to VIPs during the election. We therefore require the Spirit General Police to enforce his order by ensuring that all political leaders are restricted to their polling units and prevented from moving about with police escort. In addition, we have also requested the security agencies to arrest and prosecute the foreign local politicians who are plotting to disrupt the elections with armed talks, cultists, and gangsters in military and police uniform. They are as follows. Dr. Linolo Mwibubasa, Brad Mwoyode, Barika, Bari, Friday, Sine, Dumbare, Dezwa, Nika Ikina, Dr. Gabriel Pidomsi, Joe Barry Poba, Barisi Boniku, Horrible Mike Abakrim, Paul Lawrence Paul, Anosike Odua, Mr. Obams Ojima, Kenneth Chinda, Smice Azunda, Gift Welebe, Mwabuze Amadi, Chidi Wosa, Uwochuku Wosu Ndidi, Erin Lucky Mai, Baridi Edwin Katara, Solo Philemon Moore, Charles Ayao, Christian Don Pedro, Iwerebo Imake, and Aroko Simaya Ikanama. We expect the Security Air Command to live up to their assurance of providing adequate security before throughout the state to forestall any security breaches or break the hand of law and order during and after the election. We assure everyone that we will do everything within our power to resist and prevent the repeat of what happened in 2019 when the Nigerian army was used to rig, kill our people and destroy property during elections across the state. We urge and hope that the Independent National Electoral Commission will guarantee and ensure that these Saturday's elections are free, fair and credible, allowing the electors to decide their leaders. I have I declare Friday, March 17, 2023, as a public holiday to enable all private and public sector workers to travel to their communities and vote in their polling units. Finally, I thank the people of River State for their prayers, support, and cooperation since we took over the levels of governors. Please come out and vote a month for the PDP on the 18th of March 2019. It is our civil duty and opportunity to constitute the new government and consolidate the state's progress. May God bless you all and our dear River State.